Hello everyone, my name is Alberto Ibanez Diario. I work for the International Organization for Migration and I'm the manager of a project called the Global Solar and Water Initiative. This is a project that intends to mainstream solar photovoltaic solutions in the water sector and I have been working together with my colleague Asena Tendewa from Oxfam in this project for the last two years. So I'm going to introduce a little bit the project and some of the findings of this uh, first phase. In 2015, I had the opportunity to visit around 20 refugee camps in the East African region in regular was monitoring visits. And one of the things that we realized is that from all the mechanized water systems, around 90% were still relying on diesel power generators. And that was the situation for years or decades for most of these camps. This posed a number of problems, especially related to high recurring cost and the difficulty to operate and maintain these uh, diesel systems. And we started thinking that that was still the best we could do at that time for those contexts. We quickly realized that solar photovoltaic technology offered the possibility to replace partially or totally these uh, diesel systems for a number of reasons. One of them being the dramatic drop of in the prices of solar uh, panels around the world in the last decades, the much higher reliability and robustness of the technology with an important technical development of the inverter in the last years, offering a much wider range of solutions for these uh, water supply uh, projects. Countries and governments that were more and more supportive of the adoption in the adoption of these uh, kind of solutions. Also very important, the solar private sector booming in developing countries and the fact that many of the WASP projects or WASP organizations working in the relief sector uh, were working in warm places, in places where the, the solar radiation were, uh, was quite high and constant. So we had in one hand uh, a high use of diesel solutions in the world sector and on the other hand a technology that offered the possibility to use um, solutions that were more cost effective and unreliable. And that is how um, the Global Solar and Water Initiative was proposed in the first place to the donors um, to support world sector in that transition from diesel-based solutions to solar-based solutions. The project was forming the backdrop of a severe shortage of energy expertise in the water sector and a lack of uh, tools, evaluations, reference documents that organizations could use to, to start adopting these, these solutions, as well as the inability many times to properly solve the benefits of solar PV solutions to management and donors that were still basing their decisions of funding in, on initial investments rather than on cost uh, over, over time. So in 2016, in May, we got uh, funding for the Global Solar and Water Initiative and then we have been running um, a lot of activities since then. I'm just showing here in this slide the ones that are the most important um, to come to the conclusions or the fundings that I'm going to show in the next slides. And these are the, the field visits to 55 camps and communities in eight countries. Um, the couple of hundred queries that we got from over 80 WASH organizations around the world and the, the workshops that we ran um, reaching around 300 WASH engineers from 40 different organizations. From, from all, all these activities and interactions, we, we got a really good view of what were the gaps, what were the, the needs and also what, were the, what was the current practice in the use of, of this kind of solar solutions for water supply, not only for NGOs, but also UN agencies, governments, academia and private sector. 
specifically for country visits that were the core of the initiative, what we try is to have a, a holistic view of what was going on in the country. We will always work with the water coordination mechanism to present the project and, and the visit and, and then evaluate a number of things, um, main private sector, a number of preselected schemes in the, in the field, uh, run the training, the technical training for, for key was actors uh, in the field, disseminate the tools, documents, helpline, and then discuss recommendation and conclusion with key was stakeholders. And after the visit, we will always um, offer the technical remote support to those organizations that were more willing to, to make this change or to start using solar, solar pumping solutions. So all the findings and, and lessons learned that I'm going to show in the next slides are based in these country visits and also in all the interactions that came through the activities that I explained before. And the first finding is uh, related to the common enabling factors that we found in all the countries visited. First of them being related to the possibility to partially or totally solarize every single water scheme of the 140 different ones that we visited in the eight countries, meaning the solar pumping solutions that were found in the market were wide enough to accommodate all the different situations, um, big, big water schemes, small water schemes, or or water schemes that uh, needed to provide large amount of water, small amount of water, all the different variables were possible to be accommodated um, with solar pumping um, solutions. The solar prices had been decreasing in, in the different countries with a number of government accepting taxes for solar products uh, being imported into the country. There was, a, a, there was a, at least one private sector company and that we found um, good enough, reliable enough uh, to support uh, organizations that were um, willing to, to start using solar pumping technologies. We found as well that solar pumping was not new, especially in the East African region. There were already a few hundreds of water schemes solarized before the project started. So the technology is, has been used for some time in the region. The presence of high quality products in country markets, uh, especially or also in places like um, Hartun or Juba, we found the best solar panels of the world um, or some of the best inverters or um, pumps already available in the national market, meaning we organizations didn't have to, to be worried about importing products. The products were already available at the market of the different countries. And then finally, the willingness of the government to support this kind of solutions through budget allocations or the development of, of national guidelines. In terms of um, technical sustainability, what we found is that most of the of the problems, of the technical problems found in existing solar pumping systems were not related to uh, solar technology itself. Those, uh, the graph in the left, so um, um, the findings related to evaluation and that took place in 40 different uh, host communities in Kenya, but similar results were found in other countries in where uh, most of the problems were related either to problems with the pump or the sizing of the systems or water pipes that burst or, or other things, um, not specifically related to, to solar technology. Also, when comparing the frequency of um, and the generation system breakdown, the power, uh, the powering system of the water scheme, and uh, diesel generator versus solar, we found the frequency is much, much lower in the solar system. So this is a little bit as, as expected. Because of the long lifespan of solar products and especially solar panels that can warranty nowadays for a period of 25 years, and we think that these solutions are very well suited for long-term context, working with host communities or working with refugee populations, and especially for this last case, um, 
we believe this will be the default options for, for WASP organizations. Solar technology can be used also in first phase emergency. There was this uh, belief among many um, WASP actors that these solutions could be only used in places or in contexts where situations were settled down and stable, but uh, from cases in, in camps in northern Uganda where solar pumping were used from, from month one, of, of the opening of the camps, we we know uh, now that under certain conditions, uh, these solutions can be also used in, in first phase. And there is a need to insist on the necessity to look at the cost of a lifetime of equipment, uh, because there is a still this strong uh, inertia or tendency to just focus on the initial cost of, of the different solutions to decide which one to use and also to say that we insist a lot on the cost and we are, I'm going to, to, look, to, to talk about it in, an, in, in another slide later on but sometimes the use of this technology is not about cost it's about the impossibility to access the schemes to carry full every day or every week the irregular full supplies um, the remoteness of the place or the security situation that again um, make impossible to access the schemes on, on a regular basis. When working with host communities, we realized that uh, the technology of uh, solar pumping solutions have a high acceptance, but the, the success of these projects in the long term is a combination not only of the technology, but also of aspects um, related to finance and operational maintenance as probably any other mechanized uh, water supply system. So although operational maintenance costs are really, really low, uh, there is a need to, to have a, a good cohesion on the community to keep uh, collecting water fees because repairs will come scattered in time. So maybe there will be some years in where the cost of operating and running will be really low, but at certain moments we will need to change a pump or an inverter or some component that have a, a high cost. So it will be important that fees are collected and kept for those moments. Another thing that is of paramount importance is um, to think of after sales service before starting the implementation of the project. Um, especially critical the period of one to two years after installation of the project because we realize most of the problems develop in the beginning, um, in the beginning after um, setting up the, the solar pumping schemes for a number of reasons maybe there were some design data that were wrong or the installation was not properly done so it's it's very important to have that after sale service especially uh, in that in that first uh, first few months of the of the life of the of the project and if we are able to make um the solar pumping scheme work during the first 18 to 24 months, what we see is that that pumping scheme will work for a very long time. We found uh, pumping schemes that had been already uh, working uh, without any major issue in the last years for over 10 or 15 years in some communities. The other thing that we are um, we think is important is the clustering of, of uh, solar pumping projects to facilitate this after sale service, especially thinking that um, technical service is many times only available at capital level, so it will be difficult to have the, the proper um, the right technician with the proper knowledge coming just to check um, one system here and one there if, if these are very scattered in the country. So as much as possible, clustering uh, solar schemes um, will be important to ensure a proper after sale service of the systems. In terms of economics, uh, what we found is that after running present world life cycle cost analysis for 140 different water schemes in eight countries, on average, uh, break even periods of solar versus uh, generators are of, of zero to four uh, years. Uh, for small systems, we found that capital cost for solar pumping is already cheaper 
than than diesel generators in some countries. Of course, all this depend on on the size of the system, pumping times, for prices in different countries, etc. But that's average values. The graphs that are shown in the slide are for for two systems in Sud in Sudan, where cost of fuel of one liter of fuel is 0 0.3 dollars, so it's really really low, and still they are. It was it was quite surprising to see how much sense in terms of finance will make adoption of solar for for the systems that we analyze the cost reduction at the end of the life cycle of the equipment is 40 to 90 percent and we think um, this economic analysis will be a, a decision making tool for organizations uh, that are are considering the adoption of different solutions. There is a conversation on, on this same subject, the economics of solar pumping versus hand pump. Um, and we think uh, well, the analysis we, we made so break even points very, very long of 10 to 15 years. So it's still not there, but, um, but getting closer with, with every year. Okay, this is a slide coming from the valuation in 40 villages in Kenya, and I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to, some of them I have mentioned them uh, before, but I'm going to make a, a point on the financial sustainability, um, because uh, we found there are a number of organizations using already solar pumping solutions with a message of um, water is for free because solar energy is for free, and we really need to make a change on that narrative, because, uh, as explained before, payment will be necessary to keep solar um, power water supply system running in the in the long term. And a last slide uh, on the current challenges: still low technical expertise. That's a, a long-term battle in the sector. Um, there are a number of. Um, places that we visit uh, in where panel theft of vandalism was was high and so measures have to be uh, taken or or put in place um, in this in this context um, to avoid panel theft the availability of technicians as spare parts that are normally only at capital level um, a lack of solar evaluations uh, in order to build a stronger evidence to support um, um, a, a, a higher or greater adoption of these technologies and then we, we need uh, still to look at the different management models for host population there is no one solution that fit for all the contexts, and that's a point in where very, there is very little uh, documentation on what is more appropriate for different for different situations Thank you, that's all, and I'm leaving there our email addresses and the technical headline in case you have any query related to solar pumping now or later, please feel free to contact us. As said in the beginning, we try to, to serve or to support uh, the world sector um, as a whole, and um, either my colleague Asenat or myself uh, will be available at the end of the webinar to respond to, to your questions if there is any. Thank you.